When you play table tennis, are you too safe when you play your shots? Or are you too wild when you play your shots? I'm Tom Lodziak and in this video we're going to explore this topic and you're going to hear from top coach Craig Bryant who's going to explain how you can adapt your training exercises depending upon whether you need to improve your consistency or whether you need to improve your power and your ability to finish a point. This video is sponsored by the best table tennis company, Brybar Table Tennis. I recently ordered my new set of Eula riser rubbers. They got delivered really quickly, no fuss. Put them on my blade and then boom, taking my game to the next level. If you need any table tennis equipment, then go to the Brybar website at brybartt.co.uk. So if you're a player who is really inconsistent, you struggle to be able to play two, three, four shots in a row, then it makes a lot more sense to focus on exercises which is going to help you improve your consistency. Um, let's listen to Craig as he explains a simple exercise you can do. So Paul is going to do two backhands and two forehands, uh, but the objective I'm going to set him is to get around the exercise three times. So he has to hit two backhands, two forehands, two backhands, two forehands, and once again, two backhands, two forehands. If he can do that, then he scores one point. So let's have a little look. So that's two times around. Three times around, so he's got one point. So that's two points that Paul scored. And I suppose what that target does is it creates uh, consistency, it allows Paul to play safe with spin, yeah, and he's building his consistency within his game. In this exercise, you can see that Paul is probably playing about 70% of his power potential. Um, and Craig is rewarding him for his ability to keep the ball on the table. So you can see that Paul's movements are nice and smooth. He's not hitting the ball with huge amounts of power, but he's keeping the ball on the table. And if you're a player trying to improve consistency, think about playing at 70% and you may find that your consistency improves quite a lot. So if you're more of a safer, consistent player, then doing the type of exercise Paul was just doing may not bring that much benefit. Um, you may want to do exercises where you get to try to develop your power and your ability to finish a point. Let's hear again from Craig about the type of exercise that you could do. If we do the same drill, so we're not changing the exercise at all, it's two backhands, two forehands, but I ask Paul to try and win the point as early as he can, then the outcome of the, the exercise becomes different and we should see a quality difference in, in the shots. Okay, and then we'll start again. I managed to block and keep it on. So again, Paul's got to try and get the point finished within four shots. Okay, so now he's trying to figure different things out. He's trying to change the pace. He's trying to increase pace. He's trying to find answers to get the ball past me. Yeah, good. So by setting those different conditions, you can get a different reaction from the players. So if their issue is consistency, you might set a task for them to get around an exercise a certain number of times. If their issue is that they're too safe and they don't have enough aggression, then you might set something like that where they've got to try and win the point on a, you know, early on within a rally. So we can see in that exercise that Paul starts to make some mistakes as he's trying to finish off these points. But this is a training exercise. So the mistakes that he's making, they're really useful. He can learn from every mistake he makes. He can learn something about the timing, he can learn something about the swing trajectory, the contact, whatever it is. Whatever caused the mistake, 
It's something that you can learn from and try to do better the next time. So this is a, a, a really useful lesson for me personally. Normally I make these videos to help other people, but actually I think this one is so relevant to me. And um, even when I'm just training with my robot, it, it's got me thinking about actually, when I'm training with my robot, I probably train at sort of a, a, a safe pace, trying to focus on consistency, keeping the ball on the table. But actually maybe there'd be some more value to me to actually Take some risks, go for some shots, be prepared to make some mistakes, um, try to hit some winning shots. And when I start to achieve this in my training sessions, then hopefully it's gonna start filtering through a bit more to my real match play. So that's me and what I think I need to do to improve, but what about you? Where do you fall on the scale? Are you too safe when you play or are you too wild? Um, let me know in the comment section below. I'd be really interested to hear. Thank you very much for watching and a big thank you to Craig for sharing those ideas. If you want to find out more about Craig, then go to his website at topedgetabletennis.co.uk. And thank you very much for to Brybar Table Tennis for sponsoring this video. I'll have lots more videos coming soon. I'll see you then. Bye bye.